SpaceX's Elon Musk arrived in Eagle Pass, Texas yesterday, an area where large groups of migrants have been crossing the Rio Grande into the United States to get a firsthand look at what's been going on at the southern border. Musk is visiting the border with Texas representative Tony Gonzalez. Musk wrote on S. X yesterday evening, just arriving at Eagle Pass. We'll start X live stream soon so you can see the border situation in real time. So here we are uh, at Eagle Pass uh, and we're going to be uh, meeting with uh, uh, the sort of the major, the major officials uh, uh, and uh, law enforcement are responsible for the border and um, and you'll we'll hear it directly from them and see it, see exactly what's going on uh, for yourself. So I'm Tony Gonzalez. I'm the uh, local congressman here in the district. My district is 823 miles of the southern border, places like Eagle Pass, El Paso, Uvalde, Del Rio. Uh, we've been at the epicenter of this border crisis. Many people you'll see are fleeing poverty. I get that. Sure, sure, sure. But there are others that are fleeing, you know, incarceration. Yes, <laughs> we, we are basically it seems like a place where you can go to get away from the law. Anyway, that's like, I don't know if you can sort of see that group, but. In that conversation, Gonzalez and Musk also implied that possible murderers were being led into the country through the border. Musk announced his visit on X earlier this week, saying, I spoke with Rep Tony Gonzalez tonight. He confirmed that it is a serious issue. They are being overwhelmed by unprecedented numbers, just hit an all-time high and still growing, and going to visit Eagle Pass later this week to see what's going on for myself. Joining us now to weigh in on this in the current situation at the border is senior writer at Town Hall, Julio Rosas. Julio, thank you so much for joining us. I understand you were at Eagle Pass for about a week yourself. Shortly, You left shortly before Elon arrived, but give us a, a rundown of what you saw at the border. Is I mean, there's no question that these are unprecedented numbers. How much exactly is this overwhelming both Border Patrol agents as well as the shelters that they typically keep these people in, or detention centers, rather? I mean, so I, I've been to Eagle Pass a number of times uh, over these past couple of years, and this was the busiest I've ever seen it. Uh, part of the reason why I went down there uh, last week was because there was a concern that due to the consistent, I mean, you know, 2,000 people entering per day in that in that area where you saw Elon Musk and Congressman Gonzalez, um, there was a concern that because the holding facilities were already over, over capacity, that they were going to have to start keeping people underneath the international bridge, similar to what happened not too long ago in Del Rio, Texas, which is about an hour north of that when all those Haitians were, were down there. And I, I, went, I was there at that time myself. So um, for, for a small town like Eagle Pass, it's about 20,000 people, if I'm recalling correctly. And I, I mean, the, 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 the population of Eagle Pass in terms of illegal number, illegal immigrants coming in um, is, is exceeded within a week. Um, and, and that's happening on a weekly basis. And so it, it's not sustainable for Border Patrol. It's not sustainable for the local uh, authorities. I was with the fire department. And uh, unfortunately, the very first call of the day that they got when I was with them was to pull out uh, a man who had drowned five, five days prior. And they, they finally saw his body. And so I, we, we had to go re recover that. And so th this is something that's happening not just in Eagle Pass, but I mean, El Paso as well. Uh, the Rio Grande Valley down in Brownsville, the Border Patrol sh sector chief just yesterday tweeted that she was experiencing another surge down there, too. So this is not just one place. This is uh, the basically the majority of the entire southern border. When you were at Eagle Pass, did you speak with the migrants about their reason to come to the United States or what their view was? So a lot of them uh, were from Venezuela. So obviously there's a lot of incentive to leave that country. But what's interesting is that oftentimes, and this isn't in every case, but oftentimes they had already left Venezuela and they had settled in some other South American or Central American country. And so um, because of the Biden administration's policies, uh, they decided that they want to come to the United States to make more money and they're going to enter through this way. And so there, there's different reasons for, for different countries. Uh, Nicaragua is also a popular one because obviously there's, there's a you know, regime there as well. But I would say that you know the, the vast majority of the people that I've talked to, they simply want to work and make more money. And so they would fall under economic asylum. But there's concerns about whether or not that's going to be valid through what we have in our asylum laws and who's actually eligible for that because it's not just South American countries. I mean, there's people from all over 
uh, the world uh, coming coming across. I mean, we've had people from Africa uh, show up as, as well. I've met people as far away as Uzbekistan during my time. So it it depends on the country. It depends on exactly what they're looking for. But I would say the vast majority of the people that I've talked to are simply coming for economic reasons. Yeah, and Julio, Democratic politicians have been talking about giving work permits to some of these migrants, particularly in New York City. They've been in, trying to increase their shelter capacity. There was this really heartbreaking video of a veteran, an uh, elderly veteran, who was kicked out of his nursing home to make room for these migrants. And so it seems like separate from the policy changes that were made at the beginning of the Biden administration, now on a state level, you have Democratic mayors and governors increasing the pool factors for these migrants to make that trek to the border. Can you just speak a little bit about some of the other potential incentives for migrants coming at this particular time, as well as some of the measures that could be enacted in terms of border security that would maybe prevent the types of crises that we're seeing in cities like New York? I, I can tell you that people in New York and, and other places as well, Chicago, um, they're advocating for a fast track work permits for these people is definitely going to provide an even greater incentive because now not only are people um, in Central and South America going to see their family and friends already in the United States, but now they see that they're already working, right? And like I mentioned before, a lot of these people, they simply just want to make more money, which is understandable, but that that's why they want to come. So not only are they seeing that it's really relatively easy than in years past to illegally enter the country, but now they're seeing that, oh, we can even start working a lot sooner than they used to before because um, that, that's why, I understand why they want to do that because they want to get these people out of these shelters. And there's been a whole host of problems uh, with both within and, and the surrounding neighborhoods with that. But the problem with that is that it's going to create an even bigger incentive. So really, um, when, you, when you hear people like AOC and all these other Democrats saying that the border is secure and uh, like always need to throw money at it, that's not going to solve it because what, what's only going to solve people stopping from coming is what the mayor of Eagle Pass recently said is that, you know, he said it's not fair that people who did it legally the right way had to wait years to pay all this money. And there's all, there's all these other people that are just waltzing in and not facing any long-term consequences for that. So um, I understand, like I said, I understand why they want to have these work permits so they can get them out of these shelters, but it's just going to create an even bigger influx. And I can predict um, that with the upcoming election, you know, should Trump be the nominee of the GOP, uh, I suspect there's going to be even bigger activity in the months and weeks leading up to the election because people are going to want to come into the United States uh, just in case Trump does win in 2024, because obviously things will, will shift if he does under office. I want to zoom out for a second and think about the bigger picture here. A lot of the, the countries and the region you mentioned, you know, Nicaragua being an example, this was a country the United States meddled in quite heavily, specifically uh, the CIA and U.S. military, in order to overthrow a democratically elected uh, regime. And what we had was you know, decades of instability following that. And Nicaragua wasn't the only country where the United States meddled in, usually doing so, uh, to secure a, a line of extraction of not only resources, but the exploitation of labor across Latin America. And so we gained a lot of GDP from this meddling, and we left a lot of these countries pretty politically unstable. Do you see there being some obligation of the United States to make whole a lot of these countries uh, that they extracted resources and exploited labor from and also destabilized politically? I mean, yeah, look, there's no doubt that, you know, the United States has definitely kind of created some of the, the long term consequences of what we're seeing right now. But what I would say to that is actually that, you know, similar to what's happening with with Ukraine, right? I mean, we're sending so much money over there. And with the state that our country is in right now, I mean, yes, America is still pretty wealthy considering, you know, when you look at all these other places. But when you look at all of the other issues that Americans are facing and not being able to pay, you know, they're having a hard time paying grocery bills, they're paying gas, I mean, credit card debt is at the highest level it's ever been inflation. Um, you know, I think a lot of Americans would agree that, you know, before we help anybody else, we gotta be able to help our own, our own citizenry. And that's why when you have Democrats in strong blue cities saying, you know, sounding like Republicans on this issue, I think that's why, you know, we're seeing this shift because 
people realize that we're not in the position that we once were. You know, 2020 really changed a lot of things. And, you know, obviously the past happened. Yes, I'm not denying that. But we have to face reality right now and what, what we have to face in terms of our own issues. And so that's not to say that we can't be compassionate. That's not to say that we can't try to figure out ways to, you know, fix some of the issues from the past. But I think what a lot of Americans are seeing right now, they're seeing a lot of money going to Ukraine and they're seeing a lot of money being spent on these people who entered illegally while they themselves are being left behind. Yeah, and Julio, I would point out as well that giving these people work permits um, is kind of counterproductive in a tight labor market because you want to be able to make sure that American citizens who are not currently employed or not involved in the labor market would get uh, higher pay and, and better uh better working conditions before outsourcing the job to what is essentially an illegal migrant scab. Uh, I also want to turn to Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. She slammed Elon Musk's Eagle Pass visit, writing on Twitter, what's funny about this photo is that the House is holding important votes in D.C. tonight. People are scrambling to avoid a shutdown. But this Republican congressman decided to skip town to joyride with a billionaire when his own party has just a single digit margin and needs his vote. I'd love to get your response to that. I mean, I think it goes back to the point I just made, which is that there are also economic consequences to this stream of migration. Uh, the government shutdown has them. So does so does an open border policy. Can you just give us your response to AOC's criticism there? Well, yeah, I mean, it's just typical of her just to talk about anything without actually knowing what's actually happening. Um, it, it, I mean, speaking again to what's what's actually happening at the border, I mean, she she knew about all these issues way beforehand, right? And she even went down to the border under the Trump administration, right? You know, she had that famous photo op of her crying uh, outside at, at, at the chain link fence. And of course, now she doesn't care about that. She just, She's not willing to see that for herself when there are kids in cages right now, uh, just because again, like there's so many capacity issues. So, I mean, I, I, I know it's, it's within a meme within conservatives to say, you know, well, imagine if, you know, a Democrat did this, but I mean, it, it is worth pointing out that um, all these Democrats, I mean, even Ayanna Presley recently was insisting to, to Jake Tapper that the border was secure. And it's, just, and, it, and it's not, I mean, the, when you have large gaps in personnel because border patrol is having to focus on hundreds of people coming at a single point, um, that's an open border because we have to realize that the cartels along the northern border uh, in Mexico take full advantage of that. And, and that's something that's not talked about enough because that's a little bit of harder to see aspect of it. But, the, you know, when you have, yeah, I mean, we've had people murdered uh, in this country because people were let in. There was that recent case where a uh, guy was 17 years old, he crossed over in El Paso earlier this year, and because he was still technically an unaccompanied minor, he was released, he turned 18, and then he raped and killed uh, a, a little girl. So, I mean, the, the, these are the consequences. I mean, there's a direct line of, of cause and effect from what has been going on since 2021 to, to today. And the border's never been perfect, don't get me wrong. Um, you know, there's always been, uh, you know, missteps in, in the past, but, it, you know, just when you talk to people, who live there, they say that under the Trump administration, at least it was heading in the right direction. And they've seen a complete 180 from that. And it's been that way since 2021. So um, I, it's typical of AOC to say something like that. And if you know something about ridiculous photos, it's her. But uh, this, is, this is a reality that, that people are facing. And you know, for me, I mean, when we had, that was the first time I ever saw a dead body in, in person when we had a, uh, when the fire department pulled them out uh, of, of the water. So that, that's real been happening for a while and it's it's just it doesn't need to be this way but but it is this way because it's a willful incompetence all right julio rosas with town hall thank you so much for your reporting on this we'll be sure to have you back thank you